guys, for a change, I'm going to actually work on a Jetta with the TDI still in it. This is my newest addition to the collection, a 2006 BRM. It's a little too clean to tear up for a swap, but it needs a cam. Got it for $600, so going to go ahead and put a cam in it and, and drive it like it is. So anyways, I hadn't seen a whole lot of videos on doing a camshaft on these, along with the timing belt. Thought I'd make my own video of it, so I'll try try go over everything for you guys and show you what it takes because it's it's not too bad, really. Um, I've got the air box out of it now, and if you do still have the EGR on it, you'll have to go ahead and remove that from about right here over, and that what it takes to get the valve cover off and I'll go ahead and show you guys how how that goes and as far as parts for this the the biggest things are you're gonna need a set of these triple square kind of like an allen bolt there for at least down here the crank sprocket there has those and depending on I'm not sure I did the last one had them on the tandem pump but this one doesn't seem to have those it's already got Allen's in it I'm not sure if those were changed or or what but other than those the um the lock for the crank is is nice to have if you've got a timing belt set but you can definitely just mark it with a a marker i've done that as well Okay, and then once I've got the valve cover off and the, the timing cover right here off, the first thing I do is pop that 18 millimeter bolt on the end of the cam loose while everything's still attached because once the timing belt's off, it's a pain in the butt. So. Just got to remember to loosen that up first. It makes it a heck of a lot easier. Now, you'll be able to see more once I get the these lifters off for the injectors. But this, this lobe there is like really bad. But mostly all of the exhaust valve lifters are all worn. You guys will see more once I get these off. And again, these are these triple square bolts on top. Just kind of loosen them up. And they'll lift off as you, as you loosen them. there and once you get the lifters for the injectors off you can see 
just how worn those cam lobes are. The ends are just all flattened out. But this one on the end is the, the worst. I don't think I'll be able to get a video of it until I have the lifter off, but if I can get the light in there, you can see it's completely worn through the top of the lifter. So it was really close to complete failure, which would have wrecked the head. It's amazing how fast these things can do that, but anyways, now we're ready to set the the cam at top dead center so we're going to pull the fuel pump and vacuum pump off the tandem pump as they call it and get the number one cam lobes both pointing up that tells us we're at top dead center and we'll be able to line it up with the end of the crank end of the camshaft there also, I almost forgot the serpentine belt tensioner here is in the way for the timing belt. So there's two 13 millimeter bolts here and clear down there just past the alternator. So got to pull those off first. Okay, and then obviously you're going to want to take the wheel off even if you don't have a lift to get it up here nice and convenient. Um, and then after that, there's a plastic shroud here, the bolts underneath, there's a bunch of screws, and that pops right off and makes it really easy to get up here to this. You can see everything there, so obviously get the serpentine belt off, and then you can break those bolts loose and get the crank pulley off and then the timing belt cover there's a bunch of little 10 millimeter bolts under there so we'll go ahead and get started with that So now with all the covers off, you can see the crank right there. It's got a little timing mark right in there. Then you can look up and see your water pump, idler, tensioner, all the way up to the, the cam sprocket up there on top. It's all pretty, pretty easy to get to, a lot better than the... The older engines, these these PDs are pretty easy to do timing belts on. Alright, so next we're going to pull the tandem pump now. And then we're going to put a 19mm 12-sided socket on the crank. And spin it around until the cam lobes on number one cylinder are both pointing up.
right guys so if you can kind of see here both of these lobes are pointing up and then you can check right here on the side if you look at that groove where the tandem pump goes into you can see it's pretty much parallel with these two bars here just make sure it's flat across and that'll get you pretty much right where you need to be and then when you go down here if you have this cam lock it will slide in with that little arrow lining up and you can see see if I can get it out there there's that hole on the back there and it goes right there that pin slides into it I don't know if I can put this back in one handed or not yep there it goes so there you go once that's locked in you are ready to loosen up your tensioner back here right there and then you can pull your belt off and get ready to pull the cam and everything will stay in place. All right, we got the timing belt off. So now we're ready to start taking the, the caps off for the cam. Um, easiest thing to do is start and take off one, three, and five. If they're not numbered, it's nice to go ahead and put some numbers on them so you don't get them mixed up. And you can just pull those right off and then slowly pull off two and four to release the the spring pressure on the the valves and that'll let the whole thing come up Okay, and right here while you've still got the two and four bolted down, it's a great time to tap this sprocket loose. If you don't have a puller, just make sure you've got this nut unscrewed away. And you can go ahead and slide a punch or something right here. And there it is free. So here's our cam here. You can kind of see, if I can get it in the light a little better here. Some of the lobes aren't terrible, but the worst one is this last one here up on top. And it is very worn, which is apparent in this lifter. It wore clear through there. The center little pin was about to pop out and start wrecking stuff. The only other major 
divoted one is this one over here on number one. The other ones are worn, but they don't look quite as bad. But yeah, this was very close to catastrophic. So now we'll go ahead and pull the bearings off of all the the pieces there and then we'll pop the lifters out and it'll be time to start putting new in. Didn't really go over the parts that I got here, but this is your basic timing belt camshaft kit from Cascade German. Comes with your new bearings, nice billet cam, lifters, and the, the whole timing belt kit. So now that we got that stuff out, you can see here. Oh, I'll try to get an angle here, but that is extremely dented down a lot of times I see all of them are but then this was the issue it was about to be bad you can just drop that guy right out of there Okay, all right, with the new lifters and bearings on the bottom half, we're ready to put some lube on the bearings in the cam and go ahead and set the new cam in. And then we'll go in the reverse process and tighten down two and four again to get it set in place with the number one lobes pointing up for top dead center. Okay, and it gets a little tricky here because you want to lube your bearings on the two end caps, but then you can kind of see right here these spots on either side. You want to clean those as well as the surface right here on either side and put just a dab of RTV or silicone there whenever you're setting those down. There's a little, it's right where the seal goes on this side. It just prevents the oil from seeping out the ends there I guess so we'll go ahead and do that and get them all snugged down I'm not gonna go over torque specs you guys can look that stuff up and do that however you see fit and I think that's that's it for now
All right, and the next thing I like to do is slide the end seal on here while the silicone is still wet, and I usually wipe it off on both ends so it's not a bump or anything for the valve cover gasket to seal on. And then next thing to do will be the tensioner pulley for the timing belt because you've got to unscrew that screw with the tensioner still on there. It's kind of a pain, but you can get in there with a pair of channel locks or something and try to make that work. Okay, if you can see right there, then there's a little tab that that lock slides into on the tensioner. Then you can go ahead and slide it in, get the nut on so it's snugged up, that way it can't come out of there. And then you're ready to go ahead and put the cam pulley back on. Make sure you get both of them nice and cleaned up, and it's got this groove in it you got to match up and then it'll go right in and lock lock into there you can snug it up same thing you'll wait till you're getting the timing set up to actually torque it down so you're pretty much just getting it started here. That'll work for now. And then pretty much the next thing is gonna be your water pump down there. There's three 10 millimeter bolts that hold that in and then you just wiggle it out. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is dump the lower radiator hose and then one of these hoses on the oil cooler down here. Okay, yeah, this guy right here. If you unhook that along with this lower radiator hose down where it hooks to the radiator with the quick disconnect, dump both of those and that will get you to where there's only a little antifreeze left, but you still kind of want to pull that water pump out real slow. I don't think I'm going to video all that, but get it all drained out to where you can do as much of a flush as you can. And, yeah, I'll get that going, and then we'll proceed from there. All right, so here I've got the lower radiator hose popped off there, drained that. Then I went over here, popped that lower hose off of the oil cooler. That one is a real pain to get to, but it's just nice to give yourself almost a full flush. And if you go ahead and pop one off the EGR in the back, you can about drain everything out of this. But I definitely wanted to mention when you pull this water pump out, once you get the bolts out, you just want to crack this thing open until it just starts to leak. And it's best to just let it drip out like that. That's about what you want. If you don't, it will drop a gallon of antifreeze right on your face. Or if from up above, it'll still be everywhere. So definitely let it crack open and let it drain out. That would be my advice. All right, the nice new metal impeller water pump is in back together all the hoses in and then now's a great time to drain the oil because the cam breaking procedure is going to have you change oil a couple of times at least from what I read but definitely starting with new oil off the get go so we're ready to slide the timing belt on and I wait to put that idler back in 
right there until the belt's on. Just makes it a little easier to get the belt on. All right, so now that we're back on the top side here, got all the hoses hooked back up and everything, we're ready to slide the new timing belt on here. And at this point, you'll have to loosen up these three bolts on the cam so that the sprocket can move a little bit to fit the new belt. Um, you just keep watching this uh, where the tandem pump goes in. You can see the get in there, but make sure that's still sitting nice and straight with the top of the, the head here. And that tells you at least really close where the top dead center is at for it along with the the cam lobes. I like to leave the the rockers for the injectors off until the last just so I can see everything easier. And so we'll go ahead and put the put the timing belt on now. Alright, so as you could kind of see there, I had a little trouble getting the belt on. You've got to pull the tensioner back off. I thought I could get it on with it snugged up, but you slide it on as the belt goes on. And then you've got to go ahead and either get your hand back in there or get something in there to push the, the lock back in and get it into that little groove I showed you earlier. And then... I meant to show you this too before, but you can tighten it with this Allen key here. And you're turning it direction of the arrow there. And then you're going to turn it until this arrow meets up with this groove here. That's what you're going for. And yeah, and then first thing, slide the new idler on. Alright, so we got our tensioner tightened up so the, the timing belt's all in place now. And the only thing loose still are these three bolts for the cam. So just again double check on this back side here that it's straight. You can try to make a mark in here to line it up how it was, but it's you're using a mirror and I don't know, I just fight it more than anything. You really will need VCDS to check the cam alignment once you're done anyway. So this at least is close and you can go from there. So go ahead and tighten those up. And then I am going to go ahead and take the crank lock off and spin it around a few times. I will pour some oil over the the cam, the break-in oil, and then, yeah, make sure it's all still lined up again.
And there, as you could see, I turned it all the way around and locked it back in place. The number one bulbs are pointing up again. And the end of the cam is nice and flat with the head. So I'd say it is good to go. So then I'll put the injector rockers back on and then go ahead and start putting all the covers back on. And then the last thing will be a new seal for the tandem pump and get that bolted back in place. All right, it's getting pretty close here. I'm not gonna walk you through the entire reassembly. Just putting the, the intake back together, getting your intake hose in, getting all the covers back on. You, you wanna leave the top one off if you're gonna check it with VCDS to make sure you're right there in spec. But other than that, um, definitely make sure you get plenty of um, the break-in oil on top of the cam there because it does take a while to get it to start again since we lost all of our prime pressure off of the tandem pump so um, yeah that's another thing is keep the battery charged because it's gonna need to turn over for a little while but everything else is pretty straightforward from here all right so Got all the belts back on, all the covers except for the top one here, because I'm going to re recheck that with VCDS once I get done. I'll show you what screen that looks like if you guys have it to check, but just got everything plugged back in and we're ready to go. I'll show you how long it takes after cycling the fuel pump in the tank a few times, how long it takes for it to fire back up again. I'm not going to do the camshaft break in right now, but I'll just give it a quick fire up, make sure it's ready to go. Right, guys so as I said the last step is that torsion value that you can check with VCDS 
as long as it's running, you've got it pretty close, but you can go ahead and pull it up here. And this one is reading two right now. And I've read a lot of mixed things online about what it's supposed to read, plus or minus one. Um, I've read people having it as far as six off and gotten better fuel mileage. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at two for now just to see how it does. Um, I also adjusted one where it, it was so far off that it read zero, but it actually wouldn't run. It was so far off. So apparently that's a possibility too. It's definitely nice to have this to check. You can also zoom up here quick. That was group four. And let's see, group 13 here shows you the injectors. And obviously they were pretty dead on because they are reading beautiful. They're supposed to be plus or minus one to 1 1.5, I think. And these are all about dead on. And as you can hear, it is just running perfect. So if you need to adjust that torsion value, it's those three bolts on the side of the cam. And it is very sensitive, so be careful there. If you want to mark where it's at so you can go back to it because it will, it will not run if you get too far out. So that's that's the whole thing. So that's the whole whole job there. Hopefully that helps out somebody. Thanks for watching.